If you search for domain-specific glossaries on the web, you often find bilingual term collections with very little structure. In fact, such collections often contain just terms in one language and their equivalent in another language, ordered alphabetically and providing no additional information. This is not what we really mean when we speak about terminological databases, primarily because a term base is supposed to be a representation of knowledge in a domain, whereas a bilingual list of terms contains just the terms and little knowledge. Looking at our next example from YATE, the official EU term base, we can see that it contains considerably more information. Now, this information has structure. First, you have the domain environment. Then you can discern two separate blocks for each language. And each language block apparently starts with a definition, which is then followed by terms. So for English, we have the suspect site, possible hazardous site and proposed site as terms. And each term also has some additional data fields associated with it. We already introduced the basic structure of a term entry in Unit 2, but now we're ready to organize it uh, into logical levels which contain the relevant data fields. So starting from the top, we have the entry level which will typically contain some administrative data about this entry, uh, such as the entry number. Um, then we have the concept level, which again contains some concept data and the concept itself. At the language level, you will find uh, um, information about the language, such as the language code, and also the definition in that particular language. Then on the term level, you find individual terms. Uh, for each uh, of the included languages and the subterm level um, will involve all the information pertaining to a single term in that particular language. There are certain data categories such as the category note uh, which may appear on all levels so it may either appear at the concept level, language level or the level of individual terms. Um, the choice of information to include in a term base isn't arbitrary, nor is it strictly prescribed. Um, for, for, so for some domains it makes sense to include images um, or videos, Others may require formulas or taxonomy codes or thesaurus descriptors. Then again, the design of the term base will uh, uh, depend on the target audience. So if the target audience is multilingual with varying language competences, it makes sense to include more grammatical information, such as part of speech or gender or inflected form. Um, whereas for a, a, for a linguistically mixed audience, it is also a good idea to include the definition uh, perhaps in all languages included in that term base. Now, on the other hand, if the target audience are translators who share the same mother tongue, they probably will not need grammatical information for, they, for their own language, because they are basically native speakers in that language, right? Uh, however, it might be a good idea to include in the target languages as much con contextual information as possible, such as an example sentence, um, notes on usage, uh, phraseology, collocations. Sometimes it is also important to include the information about the customer or uh, the project within which the term base was created. Um, the list of data categories that you see in this slide is not exhaustive. Uh, the TBX standard, which regulates the format and structure of term bases, defines over 100 different data categories. 
It is the most important XML-based data format in the field of terminology and is supported by all main terminology tools and applications. There are several dialects of TBX um, which use only a subset of data categories such as TBX min, TBX uh, basic and TBX core. The categories in the previous slide were taken from TBX Basic. And uh, you can find more information about TBX uh, at this uh, link. And now, before we look at some tools for term based creation, uh, which is also planned for this unit. Uh, let me give you some practical recommendations for designing your term base. Now, firstly, you should think about the purpose of your term base. Who are the target users? Are you addressing experts? Are you addressing translators? Are you addressing an unknown general audience? Then you should think about the target scope of the term base you're creating and the special features of the domain that you would like to represent. Um, this will help you decide on which data categories to use and which of them should be mandatory for each entry. Um, once you've decided on the basic structures, there are some principles to observe when you're entering data into your term base. Now, the principle of elementarity, for example, says that each data field should contain a single element of data. I've listed some common mistakes below. Uh, for example, here, where you have the National Library of Medicine and Health, brackets, NLMH. So, how many terms are these? Is this a single term? Of course not. Um, the abbreviation is a separate term and it should be included in a separate data category within the same entry. Uh, a similar example you can see below. So um, language or linguistic review is basically an example of a term variant. So you can either say language review or linguistic review. These again are two terms. So a, a term base should preferably list language review and linguistic review as two separate entries, not, not, not two separate entries, but two separate uh, data fields within the same entry. And again below, um, central processing unit can be used either as central processing unit, which is the canonical version, um, so the official version of the term, but then you can also use the truncated version, just the processing unit. These are two term variants uh, and plus the abbreviation, so we would have three terms, central processing unit, processing unit and CPU that should be en entered into separate data fields within the same entry. Um, and then finally the granul granularity principle. Uh, when you're designing the term base, it is uh, better to use clear and specific data categories and to use predefined lists of values instead of free text. So for example here where we have grammar as the data category, which then contains the information M and PL, probably referring to masculine and plural, it would be much better to use separate categories. So uh, one category for gender and another category for number. Uh, this will make uh, data entering clearer and better organized. Now finally, and this serves as an announcement of topics yet to be covered in this course, it is always a good idea to use text-based methods for the following tasks. So you can use text-based methods or um, corpora to find authentic examples, to check the frequency of term variants when you're deciding whether to include a certain term variant or not, 
you can uh, fetch phraseology and typical collocations to include in your term in your term base. You can also use corpora, of course, for term mining. So to obtain an initial list of terms and potential keywords to include. Um, you can also compare usage between two or more subcorpora, uh, and you can validate existing entries using a corpus if uh, you're, for example, asked to validate or to clean an old term base.